Beispiel hier. Ich habe eben angesprochen die Führung der Brigade. Was gehört jetzt genau alles dazu? Die Current Opsail kann natürlich nicht alleine arbeiten, sondern rundherum sind angeordnet verschiedene Zellen, die dafür notwendig sind, um die Brigade zu führen. Im Bereich dahinter, direkt angegliedert, ist der Bereich Joint Fire. Diese sind dafür zuständig. Final haben wir zusätzlich auch noch eine Satzkommandage der Amerikaner, um ihr System für ihre Kräfte hier zur Verfügung zu stellen. So, to work at the Brigade Command for the American Systems, so the multinational, um, multinational assets here, here of the CAS board. So they are the service running um, in the vicinity of the current observe, so if any connection here would be disturbed, at least the current observe would still have, uh, have connection. Uh, Mitchell Schmielars, uh, Major. I'm a company commander with Charlie Company, 432nd Civil Affairs Battalion. So we're working with the uh, 21st Armor Brigade uh, from Germany. Uh, we're training here at Hohenfels, uh, JMRC, um, to enhance allied interoperability. And it's been a great experience so far working with the Germans um, in a full-on uh, brigade level exercise, um, incorporating uh, nations from across Europe and the world and it really what it does is it tests our ability to work together as a team um, in a NATO environment and a, a current uh, contemporary operating environment. It teaches our soldiers how to work with other people. Um, in civil affairs, that's something that's required. Uh, we engage the civil environment and it's required for us to be able to work with other cultures. Um, and here, this allows us to work with other nations and learn how to do that in the context of a multinational environment. So it's been a great experience for our soldiers to learn how to exercise their soldier skills um, as well as their metal skills um, and doing so in a multinational environment where we have to adjust our normal processes to learn how to fit with what a multinational uh, brigade, a multinational force like NATO uh, needs to be able to operate effectively. Okay, gotcha. All right. So we're uh, fighting the Skulkin Alliance. 
um, which is Bothnia and Tarike. And they have basically invaded Eastern Europe and are now uh, invading Southern Germany. So we're defending Southern Germany from the, uh, NATO is defending Southern Germany from the uh, aggression of the Skulkin Alliance. I would say that this kind of opportunity is fantastic. We don't get it um, often enough, and it's great to be working with the German Brigade um, in Germany. So it adds a, an, a different dimension um, to a lot of the exercises that we normally run. So I would say that um, if anyone gets an opportunity to come here and do a multinational exercise, um, it's a fantastic experience and it's likely to have uh, significant value in terms of uh, training and learning how their own processes can be adjusted to fit the situation. So a lot of times, so we have JRTC and NTC back home um, that, we, that I've participated in as well. So that's usually with an American-only unit. For the most part, my experience has been that way. Um, here, so it's a lot. It's a lot of preparation to be able to get over here and to deploy um, as a company as part of a different multinational brigade. The support structures are different. The planning structures require a lot more coordination. Um, the interoperability of communications and sustainment is challenging. So from a reservist perspective, um, we handle all that before we come over here in the months leading up to the exercise. So it's very different from, um, you know, the standard two weeks a year and uh, one weekend a month um, in that we have to try to get all of the training and coordination done within the confines of that, of those restraints. Um, so it's challenging and it requires us to come over here, uh, small parties, advanced parties to come over here. Uh, three, four times prior to leading up to the exercise um, to be able to coordinate everything well. So it's very challenging and it's a lot more than we typically do um, in a given year back at home. So it's a great experience for our soldiers too um, to just kind of get out of the, the standard one weekend a month mentality and understand what it means to, to actually have to prepare for uh, you know, a, a month long uh, exercise. It's, it's only you know, a couple weeks here, but we still have to do training back home, training up for this exercise. Uh, my name is Remco. I'm a captain with a Dutch reconnaissance company from the 43rd Mechanized Brigade from the Netherlands. Uh, we are part of the company command post of the reconnaissance company and uh, for this exercise we are uh, working together with the German reconnaissance company. Uh, our units, our platoons are in front of the brigade functioning as the eyes and ears of the brigade so we can provide the brigade commander with uh, sufficient information to support his planning process. Um, so right now as we are here our platoons are in the front having the eyes on the enemy reporting back to here. Uh, here there are uh, people doing analysis on the information so it turns into intelligence and that goes straight to the brigade staff. On the enemy, on terrain, uh, so basically all, the, all what's happening uh, in front of the brigade and that can be either for our advance or to uh, predict what the enemy will do so we can react to that on beforehand, if it's possible. Well, uh, f first of all, the terrain here is uh, pretty uh, much d different from what we are used to back home. Uh, so for the drivers, it's uh, quite uh, challenging. Uh, and uh, the cooperation with all different NATO partners uh, is, uh, is great, actually, to see what we as a whole can uh, do here. Um, uh, together joined uh, as a multinational uh, br brigade division. Um, so what will they take? Uh, experience, uh, fun too, but experience, uh, yeah, bringing their uh, readiness to a higher level basically. In a total of about three weeks and I think the exercise itself will be about a week and a half. So basically being in the field will be a week and a half and the other days are for prep, preparation and for uh, redeployment.
the focus, even if you zoom in, it changes when you zoom out. So that, I don't know if that's the case with this one. This one, the, yeah, the focus. So, so challenges with multinational operations, well, every, every country has their own capabilities uh, that we bring to the fight. So it's trying to figure out how to use each of those individual capabilities to achieve one common goal. So the British forces have their own capabilities that they bring. We have our own enablers. Our German allies have their own enablers. So the best, the, the most challenging part right now that we're working through is how to communicate across uh, really all countries to, to achieve a common, a common purpose. In the uh, US 1-6 CAF out of 1st Infantry Division. Um, so they have the uh, AH-64 attack helicopters. They also have lift capability with uh, Chinooks and Blackhawks. Oh, what? They're sending commands right now so you can get those, those visuals in there. Just turn on your, like, your game, put it like, on medium or high so you can see inside. It's so dark. Oh, yeah? When? Uh, it takes...
So uh, what we do, we have a, we have an entire uh, battlefield out here. If you if you'll find it on the modern battlefield, you find it here. From the villages to the civilian populations to an opposing force that's a thinking enemy that doesn't just do what their doctrine says, but finds a way to accomplish their mission. We do electronic warfare here. Um, obviously the environment, the, the multinational, uh, the challenges that come with a formation that large, and then the task that we give them is a, is a challenging task. And so we, we start the rotation at one level, and then we work throughout the rotation to increase the level of intensity in all of those different areas to challenge the units that train here to get them to a level so that when they leave, they're much better than when they came in. And that's true whether it's a Bundeswehr brigade, a U.S. brigade, or any other multinational brigade that comes here and trains. Our goal is to produce readiness, and that's how we produce readiness. We start at one level, we make sure they leave at a higher one. So there's, there's two ways we expand the training area. We do have uh, certain maneuver rights areas where we can do certain military activities with the approval of uh, the local communities and the local landowners. Um, the other way we expand it is in a constructive environment. Uh, specialist Matthew Coates. Um, like, I'm a 25 uniform, uh, first ID, 234 armor. Uh, 25 uniform, it's a signal support specialist, like I, like uh, specialized, like working on radios and like just comm systems in general. This is, uh, say, the top, like the, like the main, mm, like the main source communication for like the unit. So making sure everything goes right. Every, all the planning is done here and everything like that. It's like, yeah. Uh, to be better, to, to be better as a person, as a soldier, uh, learning, learning more things in the talk, especially working with our allies and everything, getting better uh, and working with everyone. I learned, learned quite a bit. So I used to be in a, I used to be on the line company as a 25 uniform. I was a combo rep on the line. This is my, actually my first time in the talk. So I actually been able to set up the talk and see how everything runs in and out of the talk and everything like that. Die Aufklärungsergebnisse 